our desire to help millions of small business owners prosper by creating a marketplace for financial solutions that provides all small business owners all the expert insights and tailored options they could ever need. Like that is a big idea, right? I think it's really just around the how. Where I think people like Steve Jobs and, and Walt Disney might come in is like they get very prescriptive about the how. And candidly, they're creative geniuses and I'm not a creative genius. <laughs> and I, I know that. Right. And I think for creative geniuses, okay, they might be more difficult to work with, but ultimately they have a very crystal clear idea of the how. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? When you hire smart employees that have great ideas, do you let them go and unleash them to really go and achieve these great things in your business? Well, that's a part of empowering them to go out there and do the work that you hired them to do. But what happens all too often is we hire these smart people and then we don't really allow them to do the work. We don't allow them to come up with the best ideas because those ideas, maybe they're heard, but they're not really executed on or we don't allow them to really execute on the process. We, we hold back and we give them the you know the step-by-step, step, if you will. Now, if you hired smart people and you empower them, something magical happens. I've seen it happen many times with my clients, but you'll learn today about empowering employees from uh, someone I really admire. I went out there and found someone that I thought really could uh, tell a story about why you should empower them and, and how do you empower people. I found Jared Hecton. That's a tough name to pronounce. Jared is the founder of Fundera. Fundera was number 69 on the Inc. list in 2018. They have more than 100 employees, and Jared really does believe in empowering employees. Jared is a self-professed lazy uh, leader. I smile when I say that because he's really not that lazy, but he wants to make you believe that he wants others to, uh, to do all this work for him. But really, it's about empowering them to think for themselves come up with their, their great ideas because they're on the front lines. We talk about it today in this interview. One of the things I love most is he talks about the reasons, um, you know, the steps he goes through for empowering employees. So tune into that today on the podcast. Now, here's the interview with Jared. Thanks for tuning in here to Grow Think Tank. Really excited about sharing this with you. And before you run, I have done so many interviews in the last few weeks I have such a, an exciting time to share with you that those interviews have been organized into the 12 core principles of fast growth companies. So all you have to do to get that is go to genehammett.com slash worksheet. So you can get the 12 principles and I've been able to uh, go in there and find which episodes will align to each individual episode. When you subscribe to Growth Think Tank, you will find exactly what you need so that you can move forward. And many of them haven't been published yet, depending on when you're hearing this, but you can you can tune in to the date that means the most to you. Hi, Jared, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Fantastic, glad to have you here at the uh, Growth Think Tank. I've already let the audience know a little bit about you personally, but I'd love for you to tell us about Fundera and kind of the, the beginning of that and what you guys do. Great, uh, so Fundera is an online marketplace for small business financial solutions with a primary focus on helping small business owners identify and secure the right types of lending solutions. So when a, you're a small business owner and you have some type of problem you're trying to solve or some type of opportunity you're trying to pursue, like you want to expand or grow faster, or, uh, make sure that you have some cushion on your balance sheet, um, Fundera is really there to help you solve that problem or pursue that opportunity by finding you the right financial solution. Well, that gives us some context to this because you have, uh, you know, been servicing this market for a little while now. Uh, tell us a little bit about the growth of the business and where you are right now. Um, so we've been at this for around five years. The company is around 110, 115 people or so right now. Um, it's been a wild ride, but a, a terrific ride. To date, we've helped more than 40,000 small business owners successfully secure pretty close to around a billion and a half dollars of funding through our marketplace. Um, so it's been just a remarkable journey and a privilege to see the type of impact we've been able to have on the lives of the small business owners that we serve as customers. Uh, yeah. We talked a few weeks ago about leadership and the culture there at Fundera, and you had said that one of the core principles to your growth was empowering employees. So why, what is empowering employees exactly? 
Uh, it's a great question. So one of our core values here at Fundera is to be an open book. Um, it cuts a bunch of different ways. One way is be an open book with our customers. So always err on the side of being overly transparent. Um, the other way though it cuts is, is the way we operate internally. Uh, there are a lot of companies that have, you know, transparency as a core value. And it might be a cheesy or cheeky or just general kind of common value, but we think it's actually one worth pursuing and one worth hanging our hat on. Um, and the reason honestly stems from the fact that I'm generally a lazy person. Um, and I don't like to do a lot of the hard work and I like to make as few decisions as possible, but like to make sure that the decisions I am making are consequential ones and the ones that I should be making. And the only way for me to make less decisions is to make sure that everybody inside the organization has all the context and information that they need and that is required in order for them to actually independently make great decisions. Right? We are now well beyond past the point of me being the person inside the company that's gonna come up with the ideas. We're also well beyond the point where my direct reports of the people inside the company are going to be the ones that come up with all the groundbreaking ideas. It's really going to be the people who have the most contacts, are most in the weeds, are interfacing with our customers every day, are pushing code to production, are behind all the products that we're building that are customer facing, that are going to be the ones that are going to come up with the best ideas. And we believe that the only way for people to come up with the best ideas is to make sure they also have the right type of information. So it kind of comes from two different places, this notion of around empowering employees. Number one, I don't have any good ideas anymore. So we need to make sure that our employees are empowered so that they can come up with the best ideas. Um, and number two, it also comes from this place that since all of the best ideas come from everywhere inside the organization, we need to make sure that everybody is armed with the right set of information to generate those types of ideas. You know, I love this idea because too often as leaders, we, we, we become, we're the founders, we have these big ideas, and we, we hire a core set of people, and if we hold on too tightly, it constricts the company, and I think you found this out, uh, you wouldn't be where you are today being, you know, 69 on the, uh, the Inc. 5000 list in 2018, if you didn't really um, allow people to make those decisions and come up with those big ideas. That's right. Um, I think, you know, we believe in, in providing frameworks. So it's not necessarily as if everybody's kind of running around coming up with ideas to build things that are totally orthogonal to what our customers need. Right. So we like to build frameworks so that we are very goal oriented. Hey, here's the goal we're trying to achieve, but not prescriptive at all in regards to how we're actually going to accomplish that goal or what a solution to a problem is. Because once we start trying to get prescriptive, we really kind of limit our focus, our creativity. And candidly, if I'm being prescriptive, it means that um, I'm probably prescribing something that's not going to be the most optimal solution. I wanted to dive deeper into this whole notion of empowerment, because I, I'm going to say this comes from a sense of confidence and courage on your behalf. Would, would you agree to that? Um, I think that's a very nice thing to say. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you saying it. Um, that might be um, 10 to 15% of it, right? I think that other uh, aspects of it come from potentially things like practicality, right? This acknowledgement that um, we are well beyond this, this, the, uh, the place where the ideas need to be generated by me or by the people who reports to me. I think part of it comes from a place of, well, good people only wants to work at a place where their ideas are heard and they actually have the ability to contribute um, in ways that are beyond potentially the scope of their day-to-day -day role. Um, so there absolutely is an element of that, right? You want to let great people flourish inside an organization, and this is absolutely a way to make that happen. Um, and then I also genuinely do believe that there is this notion of, I, you know, I wouldn't maybe categorize it as laziness, <laughs> Um, but maybe it is a little bit of laziness to say, hey, I really don't want to be, nor should I be, or nor should the people who report to me be the people who are calling all the hard shots and making all the hard decisions and coming up with all the ideas day to day. It's actually just not the right way to run an organization. You know, there's some big leaders out there and some that come to mind, like a Steve Jobs or even a Walt Disney, who had yeah. this really big idea and expected everyone to fall in line with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think those are much more rare than what we have today because I've talked to a lot of people just like you Jared and they really do believe that others um, are smart that 
they hire them to be smart and, and come up with these ideas and it really is important to the growth of the company to have that as a part of the culture was that very intentional from the very beginning um yes and no um i mean i would say that you know we still have big ideas at the leadership level right like our mission and vision our desire to help millions of small business owners prosper by creating a marketplace for financial solutions that provides all small business owners all the expert insights and tailored options they could ever need. Like that is a big idea, right? I think it's really just around the how, where I think people like Steve Jobs and, and Walt Disney might come in, is like they get very prescriptive about the how. And candidly, they're creative geniuses, and I'm not a creative <laughs> genius, and I, I know that. Right. And I think for creative geniuses, OK, they might be more difficult to work with, but ultimately they have a very crystal clear idea of the how. For me, yeah, I have hypotheses around the how. And I think my hypotheses very early on in Fundera helped us get to where we are today. But what the next five, 10 years look like for Fundera and our ability to scale from tens of thousands to millions of small business owners, that how I don't necessarily have all the answers. So not a creative genius <laughs> and not overwhelmingly uh, strong armed about the how. Well, Jared just talked about the mission of their company and he really uh, was proud of being able to, to share what that was. And I really think that you should think about the mission of your company. How clear and how confident are you about that mission? Does it engage others to think like big, massively that gets moonshot? Well, if a mission is big enough, you can align people around it. They will come, but even when they're not really sure about who you are as a company, but that idea is something they can get behind, they're willing to work for you, blood, sweat, and tears. Mission-driven companies perform much better than those that are just out there to make money. Back to the interview with Jared. You talked about employees that you're willing to trust and empower them. There's probably something special you're doing in the hiring process to bring on those two type of people that are smart, have great ideas. Can you share with us anything that you've done specifically in the company that, that we could learn from about hiring? Um, sure. Uh, everything we've done in hiring and like generally speaking, some of my hypotheses around hiring uh, and the structure that we have around hiring, I've stolen from other places. Um, <laughs> There is uh, this book called The Who Interview. Um, I forget the, the authors, but they run a company called GH Smart. And essentially, it provides you a framework and a list of questions um, for hiring people. Um, it starts with understanding what, uh, essentially, what are the outcomes that you actually want this person to achieve and what are they going to be responsible for. Helps you create a scorecard for all the different types of attributes that you're looking for in a candidate, and then actually provides you an interview format so that you can A, evaluate the candidate against the scorecard that you've created, but B, and I think this is the important thing, is actually get to the root of what this person has done over the history of their career. I think all too often, it's very easy to um, be very superficial and high level in an interview and let people essentially get away with glossing over what they've actually specifically done inside another company in the past. And this, I think the biggest takeaway I have had from reading this book, The Who Interview, is it really does provide you a way to get to the core of what they've done, right? It's one thing to be part of a team or be part of an organization that's like accomplished great things. It's another thing to actually be a person inside an organization who's operated with a great deal of ambiguity. And because of that person's Herculean effort, that company was able to accomplish something absolutely outstanding. And it's really, it's providing a framework for distinguishing between those two things, right? What did the company essentially achieve in spite of this person being there? And what did this person actually do and accomplish inside this organization? That is the ultimate and distinguishing factor in whether to move forward with a candidate or not. Would you say that your core values filter into that, you know, knowing that you want to have a culture that, that has the sense of empowerment um, or using that inside the interview process? Absolutely. Right. We do screen for our core values in every single interview. Um, we look for people who are outcome or, oriented, who are always going to share uh, constructive criticism and speak their mind. 
um, people who are entrepreneurial, people who are also open. It could be an open book. Now, you mentioned the entrepreneurial. That's a big theme that has come through a lot of the interviews here. Um, why do you see that being important inside of your, the people you're hiring? Um, it's a variety of reasons. And candidly, it's a double-edged sword, right? With entrepreneurial people, you're generally getting people who are extremely proactive, who are outcomes-oriented, who want to make a difference, who are mission-driven, who are inspired and self-starters. Um, it cuts another way, too, which is entrepreneurial people very often wants to go on and either start their own thing or go back to an early stage thing to get it off the ground again. Um, so uh, the key is finding somebody who has all the attributes of you know, an entrepreneur and is entrepreneurial, but who is all, also willing to stick through things and becomes emotionally invested in something and professionally invested in something where they want to see it through fruition. Now, Jerry just talked about the power of entrepreneur thinking. Entrepreneurs inside your company are not a bad thing. A lot of people will shy away from people who have that entrepreneur in their background. But I'm here to tell you, based on you know the hundreds of companies I've talked to, many of them have seen such value from these individual high performers because they think like entrepreneurs. They're resilient. They're resourceful. They are value driven. And they really want to create value in everything that they do. That those are not bad things. Jared talked about some of the other benefits to it, but I want you to really think about, you know, how are you um, encouraging people to think like entrepreneurs and how are you leading that as your company grows? It gets to be hard and many times you want to pull back, but I'm here to tell you that the power is there if you'll let it. If you have any questions about leading an organization and that where individual performers and teams think like entrepreneurs, then make sure you reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you and get to know about what you're doing to see if there's some fit for some of the work I do. All right, back to the interview. I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us because it does have that double-edged sword, but when you get it right, and you, there are a lot of people I think that are entrepreneurs that don't want to start their own thing. Yep. They wanna be great um, key, key, key members of a fast growth company like you. Even 100 people is, is fairly small in the scheme of things. Um, That's true. When you think about empowerment, um, what is something you do as a leader that you would say didn't work so well, um, either, either being you know, how you empowered someone or can you share a story with us around that? Um, I will not speak about a thing specifically, but yeah. somewhat of a, a, a just pattern recognition, right? Um, I think empowerment is a very special thing. Uh, I have a... <laughs> Um, I have a mentor um, who has this philosophy of I trust you until I don't. And essentially what that means is if he's hiring you, he's hiring you with the expectation that you already deserve to be empowered and you deserve all the responsibilities and it is on you to execute. And if you do not, I don't trust you. And honestly, I think I've gotten burned by that a couple of times. Um, so my take is when it comes to empowering people, while it's nice to empower somebody right out the gate, I think it's actually more prudent to say, hey, here's what success looks like. Here's what the end state looks like of the two of us interacting with one another and you flourishing inside you know, this company, inside this organization, inside Fundera. But in order to get to that end state where you are fully empowered, entirely autonomous, here are, the, here are essentially my baseline expectations and the things that I need from you along the way. Essentially, you're creating gates, little proof points of, hey, these are very actionable things, these stepping stones to get to this happy end state. Because what I've found is whether it's a flaw in hiring or whether it's just you know, empowering somebody right out the get-go without them actually being fully ramped and having, like I said before, all the context they need to make those great decisions. I think in order to set somebody up for success, you need to actually make sure that they are ramped, onboarded sufficiently, have all the context they need so that when they are truly fully empowered, they can then flourish. So I think, you know, if I were to distill this down to a couple points, it's, yes, it is absolutely critical to achieve this end state of like total autonomy and empowerment. You want somebody to be, to be able to operate that way. But in order to get there, the likelihood of success significantly increases when you set reasonable expectations and milestones along the way so that you're both on the same page and essentially ramping in your relationship together. Love otherwise, that. What, uh, yeah, otherwise what might happen is like you kind of, you know, you give somebody a super long leash and then all of a sudden something goes awry and you kind of end up jerking or you give somebody no leash, right? 
or a super long leash. And then you kind of end up like jerking it back. And then all of a sudden you kind of get this feeling of whiplash. It's like, what the hell just happened? Like I thought everything was great and I was over here running autonomously and I'm used to working this way. Um, and that can be a pretty bad experience for both parties. Whereas if you're setting expectations along the way, right, the leash gets longer and longer and longer because you're all operating with the same, from the same set of expectations, from the same set of information. And so ultimately it's like, great, you are fully ramped, significantly better at this than anybody else out there. Go. I like that analogy because um, people still crave support, but they do like to have their own ideas. And I think it gives them a chance to have those own ideas, bring them to you and maybe even have that conversation. And for you not to, you know, it's a challenge for you probably not to step in in some places where you know the answer. So I think that's what happens a lot in, in leadership where you're supposed to coach people, but there, if, you, if you grew up knowing exactly what to do and how to solve that problem, it's much easier just to tell them how to solve it. Yeah, you can't do that. But you can't do that. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, you know, you kind of can't do that. You just got to ask <laughs> guiding questions and let people make their own mistakes and let them know when you think they might be doing something um, or they're making a decision that it might be the wrong one, but ultimately empower them to make that decision regardless. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. What's, what's one thing you're up to next that you can share with us at Fundera that, that would show that you're investing in this whole sense of empowerment with your employees? Great question. So every year, um, I write this document called The Future of Fundera. And the document, the themes remain pretty consistent, but I kind of update it to reflect any thinking that um, I've absorbed from all of our colleagues or the market or the industry or any of our mentors or advisors. Um, and the thing I love to do with this document is A, I share it with the entire company, right? And like the company is not like, what are we going to build? It's really just paints a a happy end state for where do we want to be two and a half years from now? What does the company look like? And really kind of what are the themes or areas of investment that we need to get better at? Um, I, I love this process because it's an opportunity for me to a listen to the entire company, get a bunch of different insights from a bunch of different people, compile and update this document, share it with the entire company, and then see people come up with ideas on how to achieve this. And I would say that all of our roadmap efforts, all of the major initiatives that we do here at Fundera stem from this process of painting a picture of where do we want to be many years in the future, what are our goals, and then how do we actually get there being on the shoulders of everybody else inside the organization. So we're actually going through this process right now. I just shared the first draft of this document with the broader leadership team here, and we have a meeting to discuss it early next week. Um, so I'm just super excited to see what the feedback is and what people's ideas are after that. Now you may have said it, but how often do you do this? Uh, I update that document once a year, but this whole goal setting process and soliciting ideas and having this bottom up approach on what should we be prioritizing now happens on a quarterly basis. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Jared, thank you for being here at the, the podcast. Uh, the growth think tank really enjoys having people that, that have demonstrated the leadership, what I call modern leadership. And I really appreciate you sharing those insights with us today. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Fantastic. Love this interview because it really did unlock something special inside there. I want you to really think about you know, how you're empowering your employees, how you're, uh, as a leader, really in, in connecting to them so that they share their best ideas and that they execute on them with a sense of ownership. We didn't talk about ownership today. We talked about the entrepreneur spirit. But if you are a leader that can inspire people to feel like owners and that they are really bringing their best to those ideas and the execution of the ideas, then you have something very special and magical. And you probably know that. If you don't have it yet, I'd love to talk to you about what happens inside of leadership that makes that possible. Just reach out to me and have a conversation about the leadership and this modern leadership and what you could do to shift into that. Let's have that conversation. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.